against a lot of just talented people, people that, that you know, uh, just by being great at the right time, knowing the right people, being in some of the gyms and those draft workouts and meeting a lot of cool people and a lot of cool players. So uh, that's why I also like living in Vegas. I'm a really big basketball freak, you know. Uh, I'm always watching basketball. I'm always just, you know, trying to learn something. I don't, I don't know what it is that the game just very fascinates me in, like, different areas. So, Well, because yeah. Camp talked about that, like, and yeah. you see it. Anybody that that's around the game to any degree, if you're at practice, if you're in a game – you, you can see it. I, I know sometimes like the motor gets sped up and stuff like that. And that's yeah. the nature of the position you play. But but at the same time, you, you study the game. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm just really big. I just love the game. You know, uh, I'm just very cool to be here. So, you know, I just take every moment that I can because, you know, injury kind of humbled me as far as just my thought process of uh, playing, playing the game and it being appreciative. So now I, I'm really just big on just learning and it, it helped my teammates, you know, uh, you know, there's a lot of time you guys see can't be yelling at me, but I promise you, there's sometimes he listens to me and I can, you know, sneak a <laughs> sneak a play in there or two. You get one word, yeah, in. I get, I, I can, I, uh, I can sneak a word or or a play or two in, and he'll look at me and be like, you know, good job, you know, that's I, you know, I think of it like, you know, it's like I said, it's just grateful to be here because that's something that me and can't be talked about coming here. So to be able to connect with your coach and your coach to trust you that. Going, going, going back to, to Jonathan Jones and uh, Reggie Hamilton, and certainly obviously into Kay Felder and Jalen Moore. I, I, I imagine that Coach Campy probably didn't have to sell you too hard then, right? Uh, no, uh, <laughs> not at all. I remember getting, you know, first ever talking to Campy and, and Juco and those names that you just say and, and being a really, really big college man and knowing Kay Felder and just – you know, just really sitting back and understanding, you know, that's where Kay Felder played at. And this is the coach that coached Kay Felder. And so it wasn't really much to sell me on, you know. Was, you know, I tell him, if it wasn't for Kansas, to, to be honest, I don't know if anybody really knows about the West Fair, Hammersphere of Kansas. Yeah. I would have been in Oakland earlier, but I couldn't do the cold again. The cold <laughs> really, really, so I try to sneak to the West Coast. Yeah. But, you know, my heart got me here, so, you know, I, yeah, it wasn't much to say. Uh, for real. Well, you talked about the fact that you're grateful to be here. We're grateful that you're here, too, as well. Uh, Tone Hunter, everybody here on the Red Camp Show. Appreciate the time, bro. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. We will take a break. Campy time. Tweet those questions with hashtag AskCampy. We'll read those uh, coming up next. It is a Greg Campy Show. We're live at RJ's Pub in Rochester Hills. Chester Hills, the Greg Campy Show. My name is Neil Roll. That guy over there is the coach, Greg Campy, and the Greg Campy Show is brought to you 
by farmer owned prairie or farmer owned dairy products from prairie farms made with 100 percent real milk from local michigan village prairie farm cows real happy cows. Happy cows. yep uh the, the cows are certainly uh certainly happy uh right now camp you ready to do some ask uh ask camp sure, i hope they're really good ones. all right um well here's a, yeah, uh, i hope they're really good ones all right we'll start with this one then camp uh you, you were talking about the pizza that kind of went by our face here but that landed on our table uh jonathan wants to know pineapple or no pineapple on pizza oh no i'm not a, no, i like pineapple I, I, I do but i would never put it on pizza no, I'm sorry, I just never would. I mean, I, I mean boo this man. It, it, first of all, it ruins the ham, right? Isn't there ham on that too? What about bacon? Can't ruin bacon. I, I'm not a big bacon guy. I, can you imagine that? I'm not. A, I, I'm a sausage guy. I'm not a big bacon guy, but I love sausage on pizza. But Camp, the back of the room here is outraged right now. Yeah, I'm so, well, I'm not in that good of a mood either. So I don't know. Just, just want to bring everybody down. Right. <laughs> Who the hell puts pineapple on pizza, man? Everybody, everybody. <laughs> but you notice the pro pineapple crowd, they're vocal about it too. Like they're, they're, they're motivated. That's because they, they get chastised about it. I'm sure when they order it, people look at them like, what are you doing? Just so they're, they got thick skin, you're saying, right? Right. Just defending it. Right. I like, I like me right now. Yeah. Uh, Austin Davis, who's here in the crowd, this is nowhere near as, uh, you know, this is nowhere near the controversial topic that pineapple on pizza is. Uh, Austin says, who is sitting here, as a matter of fact, I might be uh, biased as a fan of court storming, but with the latest controversy from the Duke game, what are your thoughts on court storming? No, I think uh, if you've ever been involved in it, I think you can see where some people are coming from. But I think that what I hope they don't ban it. I know a lot of a lot of uh, conferences have put fines in if they allow it, um, but I hope they don't ban it. But I would just say, if you go look at the Creighton uh, UConn game and you watch how Creighton handled the court me, perfect way to handle it. They they kept the people from off until UConn got to their bench, and then they walled off the bench in the tunnel area. And you can see the picture of it. You can see three quarters of the court is full of, you can't see the court. And then there's an area like a little pond, you know, where it's just the court because they did, they managed it. And I think you have to understand the expectations of your fans. We've court stormed here. Uh, I'll never, the, the greatest court storm I, I'll ever have, I ever saw because when you're a parent, and you have kids that are a coach's kid, you never really. And so the, the last year that we went to the points to the championship game, but yet our fans that were there court stormed it, court stormed. And I never pay attention to that kind of stuff. And I, when I got home, I rewatched the game and there I see two of my kids running out onto the court. And it was, it was one of the coolest things I'd ever seen. And I just, why take that away from people? Uh, college basketball is so different than professional basketball. Why would you even want to take that away? That's something that's exciting and you want to happen. You just got to now because of, in, so, you know, the Caitlin Clark thing, I think, is what st started it. And then this, of course, Duke's involved. So, well, of course, yeah. You know. So um, I, I think you could see it banned for sure. I just hope it isn't. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you uh, because yeah, people have to remember too when when Duke loses, America wins. You know, for for the most part. I didn't so, say that. No, you didn't say that. Um, uh, that was that was me that, that said that. But it doesn't make it less true. No, nope. listens to you anyways. That, well, see, there you go. I'm, I'm pushing it to the limit right now. Uh, send your questions with the hashtag uh, Ask Campy. Uh, we got some more in here. Uh, Arjun says, uh, from November to present day, you guys have been able to rebound from adverse situations. With how close uh, yesterday's loss was. Uh, to the end of the season, how do you motivate the team to keep playing at a high level? Uh, I, I thought you, you threw me for a loop there when you said with how close yesterday's loss was, and then you paused. And I was thinking, well, what close yesterday? <laughs> so uh, how, how do we handle that? I don't think there's an issue with it all. You know, uh, we're going into senior night, and for the people sitting in here, many of the people sitting in here tonight know how important senior night is to Greg Campy. Uh, they know what that night's like in the arena. They know, you know, our tradition of senior night, I think, is as good as anybody's in the country. 
it's always a special day. Yeah, our kids will be ready to play. We're playing Detroit. You have a chance for an outright championship. It's like I sent him a text this morning and I said, yeah, you've won the ring, but what's the ring going to say? You know, what's the ring going to say? Is it going to say co-champion? Is it going to say champion? Is it going to say NCAA tournament? Is it going to say sweet 16? What's the ring going to say? So we have a lot more to com- accomplish. And they're focused, laser focused to us. As we've said all year, and you've heard me in press conference after press conference, everything we've done this year is for that tournament. We understand that if we win Saturday and we win uh, outright championship, that there, and then we get beat in a conference tournament, there are going to be people that are upset and say, oh my God, you choked again. You didn't win. It's been a decade, whatever, you know. We understand that. We accept that, and we put everything and every effort into winning the tournament. But you know what? It's really hard to do. It's really hard to do. If you look at since 2005 to to today, and you look at conference tournament championships in the state of Michigan, Oakland's won how many? Anybody know? Three, Three right? How, how many has Michigan won? Two. One. Three. 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 How many has Michigan State won? Eight? No, four. Four. Right? Western Michigan's run one, one. Detroit's won one. Central Michigan's won one. Eastern Michigan's won one since 2005 it's hard to win a conference tournament think about that michigan state but they go every year right because if all you gotta do is finish in the top five or six i mean they're what eighth right now in the big ten and they're talking about going but for us you gotta win it right it's hard to do i've had i we probably should have won three or four more i'll i'll acknowledge that but we haven't because it's hard to do the pressure on those kids because what as bad as you want to go as fans, it's not even close to how bad they want to go. And the pressure that they put on themselves, it's unbelievable. And that's why a guy like Isaiah Brock leaves the basket to block a three that he didn't do it all year. He leaves the basket to go block a three point shot that he had no chance to get to, but he wanted it so bad. And they throw it underneath and shoot a lap and beat us. It's why stupid plays happen, and it's what makes tournament play so great. So it is what it is, man. We're, we're going to do I'm going to put a wall of that up. <laughs> take a number, Gary. Take a number. <laughs> um, somebody, somebody tweeted at me today, uh, way to raise another banner. Where are we raising them? At your house, Cam? No. No? All right. Uh, Wes Levy, this is the last one here, Cam, before we get out. Uh, <laughs> Coach, was great to see Martez Walker visiting you on the bench at halftime a few Jeez. weeks ago at the arena. Uh, first, how is Martez doing? And does DQ Cole kind of remind you a little bit of Martez's game? Well, they're both 6'4", and they're, they're both left-handed, and they both can have a funny shot. So, yeah, he reminds me a lot. DQ's a little bit better with the ball than Martez. Uh, Martez is probably a better mid-range shooter, um, but they're very similar. And, and I, you guys, I don't believe, have seen what DQ is yet. You know, I, I think next year you're going to see that when he's featured. Uh, you know, we always – when Trey makes first team all-league this week, it'll be the 18th consecutive year that we've had an all-league player, which is, as I've said at this show before, only one other school in the history has done that, and that's Gonzaga. Right. So next year, if it's going to be 19, it's probably going to be DQ Cole, but he'll be featured in there. It's a lot of that stuff we run for Blake. A lot of the stuff we run for Golke, it will be being run for for DQ. We've got we've got to get point guard play that can so we can move him off there and get him the ball. You know, it's really important that we recruit some point guards uh, to be able to do that. But, yeah, I think they're they're very similar. Um they're, they're different personalities. DQ's personality is tremendously different than Martez's, uh, but they're, they're 
That's right, Detroit Mercy, the Metro Series coming up on Saturday night. I want to see everybody out there at the arena. We'll be back with the final segment of the Greg Campy Show live from RJ's Pub in Rochester Hills. The Greg Campy Show. We're live at RJU Smash and Season Fries, all of that. So you guys certainly know what's going on here. Uh, when's the last time you had some Season Fries, by the way, Cam? During while well, Tom speaking. <laughs> uh, yeah. Giz, Giz was back in the corner and he put them in front of me. I go, Giz, I can't eat them. I'm plus 60 pounds. I, mean, I can't eat those. He left them there and they're all gone. <laughs> All right, we'll pivot, Camp. Uh, on so, speaking of social media, we just wrapped up the Ask Campy portion of the show. I saw a, a tweet that you put once in a while. She pulls a picture out when, you know, he was at our camp, or you know, when she, I know it's getting close. To bad about it, right? You know, which Oakland basketball has meant for him championship that he got because his whole he's been in the gym when we've cut nets down he's been in there as you know a five-year-old a ten-year-old camp and for it to come true for him but if you if you look at that picture i sent That's out wild. you have got to say who the hell is open strength coach <laughs> right <laughs> yeah i mean terry you terry just sour, bro, yeah, you, yeah. you have just got to pat I and mean, when you see terry good work <laughs> All right. Now we do have a nutrition program and we do have a nutrition, but Terry's pictures side by side, every kid we recruit, because you talk about, uh, you know, do people get better? Do they get bigger? Do they get stronger? How, how do they mature over their time in college? I mean, a picture speaks a thousand words and, and that one does. So I'm pretty cool. I, I in the balance camp, all, all of that, this is this is college basketball. I hope everybody out there go to go to do everybody in this room and and everybody's listening to this show and everybody that's at the game. I'm very concerned that because the league made it a double header, that you know a lot of the fans are going to be there for a long time, and I'm very concerned the game's not starting till six o'clock. That at eight o'clock when it's over, people are going to want to leave, and I don't want them to do that. I'd rather you come at halftime. Forget the game. I'd rather you be there when the game's over so that those four seniors have a large group of people to talk to and that we send them off the way, you know, they deserve to be sent off. They get hugged and they get pictures and they, you know, we're on that court for an hour after that game, you know, giving them their due just because that means more than anything to me, way more important than that game to me. Um, we'll take care of the game. We'll, we'll do our job. I, Guarantee you we'll do our job, but that's what's more important. So if that day's too long for you, come at halftime. Kemp, I ask you this question often, but it's another moment where where I think it applies. Just got here all those years ago. Did you see this? Did you see you know rival rivalries and you know rivalry series and conference champions hanging in the balance and, and number one seats and all that kind of stuff, Kemp? Neil, I was 28 years old. 
I didn't look at things like that. I was going to coach here one year for the national championship and go UCLA, right? That's what I always said. So, I, you know what? We did get, I did get to coach at UCLA a couple yes. times. Yeah. So it worked. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. Yes. But no, I didn't. I just, you know, th that's a great question. But any, if you, um, that stuff. I mean, it, it's just, and I want them to love Oakland. And more importantly, I want them and their teammates to be bonded for life. And that's what we're trying to accomplish. And, and we win games along the way. That's great. And we have, man, we have. And, you know, you look at the list of players that have played here. I mean, the thing I just said, 18 years in a row, if Trey gets player of the year, which damn it better. If we beat Detroit on Saturday, I, I sure think he should be player of the year. He'll be the sixth player of the year in the last 15 years to play here. My God, you know, other than Gonzaga, North Carolina, Duke, where, where do you find that? Right. You know? And so our fans, you have, you're, you're pretty damn lucky to, to be able to see that. And as a coach, I'm the luckiest guy in the world to, to have coached those guys and to be part of that. So I, I don't think about all that other stuff. I just want, I'm, I'm so happy they're getting a ring. I can't tell you how happy. Uh, Camp, the game against Detroit then, uh, I know how you're going to answer this. Uh, certainly, you know, they, they have not had uh, the season that they wanted to. I'll say it like that. So that just tells you that you know what snake pit you're walking into there on Saturday. This game, you, you have no idea how it's going to go. And if we're not prepared and if we're not ready to play, it ain't going to go well. And I know one – somebody asked the question earlier – you guys, since November, have come back from every, and we will. Uh, this, that, it's in this group's DNA to, to play them one at a time. And you're never going to play 31 perfect games. You're never going to play 31 bad games. And they're not going to play 31 bad games. So, you know, things haven't gone their way, but there's a good one out there coming. I hope for them it's in the tournament, not Saturday. Right. And, yeah, and next week, obviously, at the show, we'll get into the, to the Horizon League tournament. We'll know. Do we have time? Yeah, yeah, sure. You, yeah, we got about two minutes. Well, just so everybody knows, um, if Green Bay loses, if Green Bay loses Wednesday at Cleveland State, we're the number one seed. You, you can There's, if you look at the next gen stats and all that kind of stuff, I think a percentage of us not being number one seed is less than one percent. Um, now that's probably because we have a ninety-eight percent chance of winning on Saturday, which scares the hell out of me. Um, but. So it could finish second or third for that, for that to happen. Um, so if Youngstown beats Detroit on Wednesday and Green Bay loses at Cleveland State, we're the number one seed no matter what. Um, that's just the mathematics of it. So we'll, 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 know, we'll know on Saturday what we're playing for other than an undisputed championship. There it is. I, I think that's a good place to stop it here today. Appreciate everybody coming out to RJ's Pub in Rochester Hills, uh, as you guys always do every week, man. Just, yeah, you guys, it's unbelievable. Standing room only here for the show every week. I'd ask you, Cam, did you, did you think this day was coming where there'd be standing room only for the Campy show? Well, if we got a small enough room, it, it would. But yeah, yeah. Nah, this is a pretty big room, so yeah, I'm pretty pleased with this, yeah. Uh, all right. Hey, come to see you, Neil. I know that. Okay, I like that. I like that. All right, go. so for the head coach, Greg Campy, and for Greg Hessen back in our 1270 AM at the Vet Studios, my name is Neil Rule. Uh, once again, thanks, everybody, for coming out to the Greg Campy Show, RJ's Pub in Rochester Hills. We'll catch you guys next Monday as well. Thanks for listening. Well, see you later. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate you, man. No problem. Give me about five minutes. Yes, sir.